Tina koutou, tina koutou, tina tato katoa. I'm sorry I can't be with you today in Tamaki Makaurau, but thank you to Ainsley and the ISC team for the opportunity to connect with you in this way. Infrastructure underpins our society, providing the services we depend on to live, work, learn and play. This includes energy generation and distributions, telecommunications and data services, land, sea and air transport, drinking and stormwater and wastewater services, waste management and social infrastructure such as hospitals, schools and justice precincts. This infrastructure is not just physical assets. They provide services for New Zealanders and their well-being. Sometimes the value of infrastructure is best demonstrated when it's not available. Unfortunately, that has been the case in many communities across the North Island this summer due to the impacts of Cyclone Gabriel and the Auckland anniversary weekend storms. Thank you to each of you who are working hard to support the recovery of these communities. Rotake Hananga or Aotearoa New Zealand's infrastructure strategy makes it clear that our infrastructure has an important role to play in delivering on many of government objectives by increasing resilience to stresses and shocks, meeting our net zero 2050 targets and transitioning to a circular economy while honouring the principles of te tiriti o watangi. Since this group last convened, government has taken significant steps towards these objectives, including requiring some of our largest infrastructure asset owners to now report their climate risks, impacts and actions through the Financial Sector Amendment Act. The recent cyclone and Auckland storm, a real world local example of something we've known theoretically for some time, that a changing climate will bring more frequent extreme weather events. We'll see more storms, heat waves and droughts, sea level rise may be as much as a metre by 2100. And it's not far off in the world of infrastructure. What we build today must be resilient, not just for now, but for the world of 2100 and beyond. To keep achieving this, we launched our first national adaptation plan last August. It includes objectives for infrastructure and buildings across the asset lifestyle, from investment through to planning, design, delivery and operation. It also includes system settings to help ensure we develop in lower risk locations with the right adaptation measures in place. Following the North Island weather events, we are considering what actions from this plan can be brought forward and what new actions are required to enable better resilience as part of the recovery. In the last year, we've also progressed the review of Aotearoa New Zealand's emergency management system, which includes consideration of the duties and obligations that lifelong utilities have in supporting the continuity of infrastructure services before, during and after emergencies. And as part of that response to the infrastructure strategy, we're looking at whether we have the right regulatory settings to drive optimum resilience in our critical infrastructure. Mitigating emissions is just as important as beginning to adapt. So our first emissions reduction plan released last May includes actions to promote low emissions infrastructure and buildings, well-functioning urban environments, as well as an equitable transition to low emissions energy sources and transport options. Our national, our national waste strategy to Rotaki Para includes investment priorities for waste and resource recovery infrastructure and we are developing a circular economy and bioeconomy strategy as we implement the emissions reduction plan. The infrastructure strategy highlights the infrastructure challenges we face as a result of past underinvestment, asset renewals and new infrastructure needs for the next 30 years. However, these challenges also bring opportunities. Much of our electricity today is renewable due to the foresight and investments of past generations. So what we build today will be a legacy for future generations. There are clear opportunities for a renewable energy infrastructure to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. Energy, industry and transport collectively represent 44% of Aotearoa New Zealand's gross emissions and that requires urgent reduction. We have an active programme of work to decarbonise these sectors such as the Government Investment to Decarbonise Industry Fund or GIDI and our clean car initiatives to unhook New Zealanders from vehicles that run on fossil fuels. While government has begun to set the course, there is much to be done by all infrastructure asset owners, including central government, local government and the private sector. 
the Infrastructure Sustainability Council plays an important role in helping deliver sustainable infrastructure. You are helping with ideas, new developments and sharing lessons learned with those who know our infrastructure can deliver better environmental, social, cultural and economic outcomes. Your council's rating scheme means asset owners in New Zealand and Australia can plan, gauge and compare their sustainability achievements so it's great to see a range of public and private organisations including Waka Kotahi and Kiwi Rail taking up this important tool. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I wish you a successful conference that inspires and encourages you to continue your important work. Namahi nui.